I'd like to invite to the stage a, a familiar face. This man was elected to office. I, I, I couldn't believe this when I saw this. For the first time when he was 20 years old, and he's never looked back. He's held a number of offices on the state side. He's, he's been a mayor, he's been a state representative, a member of Congress, and of course, uh, the US Senator from New Jersey since 2006. He's now the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Please give a warm welcome to Senator Bob Menendez. Well, thank you, and, and good evening. Uh, let me first uh, welcome all of our Chinese visitors to the nation's capital, and I hope your stay in Washington is as enjoyable as it is productive. To the distinguished uh, ambassador from China to the United States, to the secretary, uh, to one of the greatest mayors that New York has ever known in Mayor Bloomberg, and I say that with admiration. Uh, to all of the distinguished guests who are here, and to uh, Chairman uh, Yun, uh, thank you for your invitation, and we are honored uh, to have your company. As I know, my friend, the mayor of Jersey City, who is going to be honored tonight, uh, is honored of having your company uh, in our state and in Jersey City, and doing tremendous work. Uh, work that uh, extends the future uh, of our opportunities both in our state and in our region. So uh, we thank you very much as well. As the chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, I can tell you that we come uh, together at a time that there are many challenges and many opportunities for both our nations, a time when cooperation is preferable to any alternative. As China continues to enhance and expand its military and economic capabilities, the way in which it chooses to use those capabilities will play a large role in defining the international order in the 21st century. And uh, those of us who view this relationship as one that is strategically important uh, hope and believe that it's in China's interest to be part of helping us in a global context to pursue the international law, law and international order. And we believe that China and the Chinese people will benefit from good international partners under international law that can move our economies and our relationships forward on the same path. But when it comes to economic and trade issues, it's clear that our relationship uh, is incredibly important and the numbers tell the story, some of which you've heard uh, already tonight. The American and Chinese economies are the first and second largest in the world. China's economy has been expanding at eight to 10% annually for many years. In 2013, China and the United States conducted over $562 billion in trade. U.S. exports to China have increased by over $50 billion, a 75% increase under President Obama, from $69.5 billion in 2009 to $122 billion in 2013. The United States has over $60 billion invested in the People's Republic, while China holds over a $1 trillion in U.S. foreign securities. So the strength of that economic relationship is rather evident. And so as we move forward, and Mayor Bloomberg uh, referred to a bilateral uh, investment treaty as a member not only of the Foreign Relations Committee but of the Senate Finance Committee, I look forward to seeing uh, the results of those negotiations because I think that it is through those negotiations that our futures can be enhanced uh, and that some of the challenges that we face in the midst, these are challenges that exist in any bilateral relationship, when it, particularly when it comes to trade, whether it be about intellectual property right or industrial policy or how U.S. companies can operate uh, successfully in a country. Those negotiations provide opportunities for greater growth uh, and greater success. And I look forward to that. I, I, I know that uh, Chinese President uh, Xi Jinping, when he assumed leadership in November of 2012, was a strong proponent of economic reforms. 
He spoke about weaning China off its investment-driven model and towards a domestic consumption model. And should China move in that direction, it would certainly be in our interest as well. That will take economic rebalancing and require significant financial liberalization. Uh, and uh, how that takes place is something, of course, uh, that the Chinese government will decide. But it is in our interest to be observing it and also where we can in our negotiations to be working together to make sure that there is an open and level playing field for both U.S. and Chinese companies. And I am confident in that sort of environment uh, we will both do exceptionally well. So let me conclude before I have the privilege of introducing the distinguished uh, chairman, uh, uh, saying that I am reminded at this juncture in our history together uh, of a wise old man who was sitting uh, and a young boy who came before the wise old man seeking to ultimately fool him. And he had a bird in his hand, and he went to the wise old man and said, is the bird alive or is it dead? Knowing that whatever the answer would be, if the wise old man said it would be alive, that he would crush it. If he said it was dead, that he would let it fly. And the wise old man looked at him and said, the bird is in your hands. Our future together and the world that we will get to lead is in our hands. And how we choose that future uh, is one that can inure to the benefit of our two great countries and to an even brighter future for the world as well. 